Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's interview series. Today, I'm sitting down with the three-time Cup Series champion, two-time Buzz Shootout winner, and four-time most popular Truck Series driver, Keith Melender. Keith, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Those are all my accolades. <laughs> the sad truth is that I did all those things while I was asleep, so I don't remember them. Keith's but accolade uh, going into this is actually just being best friends with the NASCAR uh, right. fan. Yeah, if I had done all those other things, you probably would have put them in the title or the description. But instead, I'm I'm just a friend. I feel like if I was best friend, I guess that'd be equivalent of like being best friends with like Tony Stewart or like Jeff Gordon. <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't have waited a year and a half to then say, or I guess just a year to have right. you on. I'd have been yeah, like, hey, you probably you, should, you want to be on here weekly? <laughs> just say yeah. whatever. Yeah, if your best friend was like Dale Jr., you probably wouldn't have waited a, waited a year to allow him to participate. Yeah, because that's the thing, as I told you with this interview series, it seems like the there's ones that like I, I'll interview, and they'll be, they'll be a cool guest. But then there's others that I'm like, oh, that's so cool that I had that person on. And that interview would get like a tenth of the views. And I'll be like, you guys are really missing out on mm -hmm. this one. This guy is just talking all about 2005 but uh <laughs> great year yeah today we're jumping into this uh keith i thought it'd be cool to sit down and uh get the perspective from someone who is uh best friends with a nascar driver to kind of see what what that is like what you've learned from that experience and uh maybe just help someone out there who is just on the fence and they're like man i really <laughs> like this person but they watch cars go around for hours yeah, I'd be friends with them. There's probably a large community of people like that who are who are close <laughs> enough to having a relationship, but they they stop themselves and they say, "Wait, how do you feel about them cars going around in circles?" I have to find out before we can actually before I submit to you the friend card to sign. Uh, so I guess jumping into it, uh, what was your idea of NASCAR before you met me? I think there are two phases of my appreciation of nascar and and it was definitely a downhill <laughs> ride so when i was a kid and my grandfather was still alive we'd go to his house you know we'd eat a couple sundays out of the month or whatever with my grandmother and grandfather and <clears throat> that was the only place nascar was ever on but it was always on sunday afternoon po get done with lunch you roll your way into the living room and then you sit down and you just watch those cars go. And like my granddad, my granddad was never awake for it. I can't, I don't know. He probably hasn't, he probably didn't see a race for the last 20 years of his life because he slept through them all, but it was on and that was what was important. And so it was just like a thing that happened on Sundays. It did it happen in real life. I don't know. It was just on the TV on Sunday. And then after that, probably between when he died and then when I met you, it was just like, it's that support where they race cars. I, I really didn't know, think of it as being a huge market. I really didn't think of it as being this huge thing. I, I thought, honestly, I thought after my granddad died, they just stopped racing, you know, because he's the only guy watching is not watching anymore. Why well, keep doing it? Um, so that may sound harsh to your listeners, mm -hmm. uh, of which I, I do tune in, try to tune in for, for some, but, um, that may sound harsh, but hey, that's the truth. I'm here to speak my my truth. I feel like that's the thing, though, is whenever you, like, first off, when you're growing up, uh, like, there is not all of this just NASCARs in your face. It's kind of like, well, are you going to tune into the race? Or you don't know what goes on. So it's not like it's, com like, bombarding you. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I feel like if you're if you're not into it, it's just like if I tune in and watch, like, a, a fishing tournament. I sit there and I go, okay, there's people fishing. But like, as I've gotten older, I now know, like, no, a couple of these guys probably have podcasts and of what they like. These people have endorsement deals where they do, yeah. like, they're the Dell Junior of that community. Right. You know, that's isn't that the thing though? Like, the longer you spit, the internet has made has increased that. But there's a community for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at that box fan on your desk. There's probably a community of people who know about fans. Yeah. There was a, a Boring, but... me and Andrew talked about going to like random expos because I just, I love free stuff and I love meeting people. And there's one do. we looked at where it was just for pressure washers. 
<laughs> like it, it wasn't it wasn't outside it wasn't for washing equipment it was just for pressure washers mm. and i was just like i out of everything i've ever heard of that's the community i want to go into where there's yeah. people that that is just what they their whole life's work has yeah. been into i'm going to tell you whatever you need to know about a pressure washer like imagine these people have pressure washer model numbers memorized imagine mm -hmm. there's a place in your brain that can do that who knew <laughs> so like we become friends uh what are your thoughts when you start seeing like your friend walking around in like five hour energy shirts or like aspen dental hats what what are you thinking when you see that brandon i'll be honest with you i don't remember at the beginning of our friendship i think you were closeted <laughs> I don't think you I don't think you came out as a as a full on NASCAR fan. Honestly, I don't even think you did till we were in college. I don't and not again, not that being a NASCAR uh -huh. fan is something you have to come out <laughs> as, but like you that what you're wearing right now, which mm -hmm. I know would have been just average fare in yeah. college, definitely towards the end. And and now no I know that that's just that's a shirt that you throw on. Uh but I don't remember you ever wearing anything like that when we were finishing up high school before college. I think but, that was before my I had a NASCAR budget. At that point, it was just, I had all the shirts that I was slowly growing out of. Right. Or I had like Budweiser on it. And since like most of our friendships started at church, I was like, I don't think I can just walk <laughs> in this new church and be like, hey guys, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Which you didn't talk like that either, so it didn't betray <laughs> your interests. Uh, I don't... I mean, the first time you wore a like a what what Hellman's mayonnaise shirt, uh -huh. I guess my thought is like, I I know like I know you, so I know that your appreciate your appreciation didn't start at Hellman's and go down to the car and to the driver. It came up from uh -huh. the car and the driver to Hellman's. It just whatever the whatever's on the car, that's what I have on my shirt. But I even to this day, I think like why, <laughs> like why, why? <laughs> that's not normal clothes, but I. <laughs> But that's you. That's 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 who you are. And I, now I wouldn't trade it. Like if you showed up in like a regular old like button up t shirt, and there wasn't a brand to be found on you, I don't know what to think. <laughs> I just no one has to guess what you like anymore, which is nice. I think at one point in college you referred to me as a walking billboard. Mm -hmm. You are. I mean, you're covered in brands. Multiple. You're multiple billboards today. But, I just remember like people like in like in our theater group just not being able to get over that hurdle and they were like but you don't work there like did you pay money so they were like why are you wearing that and it's like you pay $25 for that right yeah you would expect this the Hellman's mandates would be paying you to wear that <laughs> shirt but like even as you sit there right now you look like you're a crew chief or something you're like mm -hmm. you're like you're telling me when to shift that's what my wardrobe I try to aim it towards is like, I want people to assume that I'm a crew chief. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can pass off as a driver yet, but crew chief I can get away with. Eventually. That's where this enterprise is headed, I hope. I hope the next time you interview me, you're, it's, what's it like to be best friends with a famous NASCAR driver, the likes of <laughs> Dale Earnhardt? I think that would take me about uh, 50 years and finding some kind of like a golden amulet. I don't know. You find a golden amulet, that'll move things back. I'll move move that time. I could probably up. I could probably get a ride for the five hundred if I went up. And I was like, I don't got sponsorship, <laughs> but I've got this. Um, so like well, we become friends. Uh, you see me wear my NASCAR wardrobe around and all. Uh, but your first NASCAR race was on my bachelor trip. <laughs> what were some of the things that surprised you once you like got to the racetrack? I will tell you, you. You in, attempted to prepare me for it, but I will tell you the thing that, that most surprised me even after you preparing me for it was like what goes on outside uh -huh. before the race. It's like every race has its own circus beforehand <laughs> outside with all the, uh, you know, the booths and the I, – I, I, I won free LASIK surgery. <laughs> and so I'm convinced that everybody wins the free LASIK surgery. Mm-hmm. But, like, there were pretty ladies walking up to like, oh, let me look at your eyes. You wear glasses here. Would you like to have LASIK or, or surgery? And I'm like, I, 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 you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, all the games that you played and all the free stuff, like, I did not 
realize that it was such a big deal. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't my first NASCAR race, if you'll remember. My first NASCAR race wasn't your oh, bachelor yeah, party. Yeah. My first rat NASCAR race is when we all went to Talladega. That's when you just really got thrown into it because you're in yeah. the infield at Talladega. Right. Yeah. Well, that, we camped on. The, yeah, they camped in the infield at Talladega. That was a. So the Charlotte race was like this is cool. This is a cool like carnival like feeling, but the infield at Talladega was like, am I in? Am I in hell? <laughs> <laughs> I, there's there's so i feel like there's danger at every turn i don't know if somebody's gonna snatch me up and stuff me in a trash can or whether somebody's gonna like sell me some illegal drugs or if somebody's gonna like give me a hundred dollars to throw a football through a ring yeah so i i think hell is probably a strong descriptor for it it was i i did end up enjoying it but it was a very foreign experience that i preferred the charlotte to the Talladega. I like how your hell is my heaven because I'm walking around and someone's like, hey, you want a free e-cigarette? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. It's free. Because yeah. I'm not thinking like, no one has ever given me something of like this powerful that was free. Right, yeah. So it was me just walking around being like, I got this like electronic device for free. Then there's these two guys walking around as the Blues Brothers. <laughs> and I'm like, what are they doing? Yeah. And um, but yeah, I, I feel like because a lot of times whenever I bring someone to the race, their first kind of like two things they pick up on is number one, just the sheer amount of people that are there. Right. Yeah, like, absolutely. They they think, okay, well, there might be 30 people that like NASCAR, but here's a hundred thousand people. And then also you start looking around, and I think you kind of just I think NASCAR has built like the the uh what do you call it? Like kind of the expectation or whatever that you're just like, okay, there's just going to be a bunch of like white, white redneck guys. Yeah. But then you go there and you're like, there's so many different people. Like, yeah, you, you still yeah. got rednecks That's to true. watch the sport, but you realize like, oh, there's so many, like, there's all these different races here. Like there's all these different backgrounds, like yeah, people nicely dressed, people that just have like a nine spray painted on their chest. You're right, though. It really was more of a melting pot than I expected it to be. You, you, I expected mm. the group to be much more homogenous, like you said, like white male. Mm. But turns out there are a lot more females that like NASCAR than you'd think it would seem. But I guess it's easy pickings if you want to find yourself a good, hardworking man. You get out there to the race. I think my favorite like moment that you got to experience was for years I had told you all these stories about like Dale Earnhardt and all. Uh -huh. But then whenever oh. uh Lizzie's dad, who was working security, was like, Hey guys, I just want you to know if Dale Jr. gets wrecked, make sure you're not wearing the guy's like clothing. <laughs> there will be a riot here. And I just enjoyed that this is not just some random guy joking and saying, Watch out. This is a guy working security saying, don't, like, if you're wearing Joey Logano's shirt, you take that shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't safe. Okay, I think one of my favorite stories, because I always, Brandon would always regale me with stories of Dale Earnhardt, just because, you know, he's a, he's a, a monolith. He's a superhero. He is a legend. And that I can appreciate whether I like NASCAR or not. And mm -hmm. Brandon would always tell me these stories about Dale, and we'd have this ongoing joke in college about, you know, just laughing about how cool they like just his 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 immense power mm -hmm. <laughs> and my favorite probably memory of the talladega race is we're sitting in the stands at the very beginning <laughs> and you know they go they go around the 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 track one time they go around the second time and then i didn't notice but around the third third lap everybody everybody uh you know raises up the three <laughs> <laughs> And, and I didn't pick up on it, but like there's every hand on the track is up. <laughs> and I look around, I'm like, Brandon, what are they doing? And he's like, it's the third lap. We we throw up the three for Dale. <laughs> like, that, just, that just makes me so happy to think of the, the, the legend status that you have to have for mm -hmm. that to happen. Um, so we, we've thrown out stories and uh, free e-cig. Uh, cigarettes mm -hmm. um but for those out there who may be on the fence about befriending a nascar fan what are some of the perks of being friends with a nascar fan there are at least two 
There are more than that, I'm sure, but there are at least two, and I will tell you what those are. Number one, free stuff. Uh, if you're if you're NAS, if your prospective NASCAR fa- friend is Brandon, you're good to go. If he is anything like Brandon, you're also good to go because he's going to go to the races, he's going to gather free stuff, and if he really cares about you, he's going to tell you about it. And then he's gonna give you some of that free stuff. I got a Ford. I got a white Ford T-shirt in the drawer downstairs. Um, I got several drawstring bags. I'll never be without something to carry my things in, and several other things. Even also, behind you, you got a yeah. I was about to say <laughs> yeah. Behind me, uh, the this friend will likely retweet giveaways on Twitter, uh, and sometimes you'll win one of those. Uh, he'll, you know, the tweet the tweet will say tag a friend, and you can. You, you and the friend can both win a, uh, a die cast. Well, we did it. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> now I got a cool die cast that I keep on my shelf. Um, not because I love NASCAR, but because I love my friend Brandon. And he got it for me. And I, it's a memory. Uh, and then second, secondly, is that you, if you don't have anyone that just loves something that you don't care really anything about, but could still interest you there. You can't place enough value on having someone behind enemy lines to tell you all about it without you having to do it. Like there's so many interesting stories that Brandon has told me about NASCAR that I don't care enough to learn myself, Mm -hmm. but they're so interesting to me being told from someone who loves it. Like, have you ever heard anyone tell who's passionate about anything tell a story? It really doesn't matter what the story's about if they're super passionate. And Brandon is passionate about NASCAR, and I can I can I can I can sit and listen to a, a NASCAR story from Brandon anytime. And I have many of those from from college. And sometimes we even make up our own. Those that, those are fun too. <laughs> um, so now, finally, uh, recently we've seen. Pitbull and Michael Jordan enter the sport as owners. Um, for you personally, someone who is outside of NASCAR, uh, is there like a ce- celebrity or some kind of personality out there that you would like to see enter the sport? And if you were like, this person is owning a car and driving, you would tune in next week because you'd be like, I got to see what happens with this guy. Old Jack girl. Black. Jack- <laughs> the easy call. I would love to see Jack Black drive a race car. Uh, Jack Black uh, has always been funny to me, but recently I learned that he has his own like gaming YouTube channel. He has a weird TikTok page that he puts all kind of weird TikToks on. He's just a wild man. He's always been a wild man, and so like to to see that crazy groundhog of a man jam himself into a car <laughs> and shoot it around the track and probably wreck you know have a wreck and you know I I could see. I could see Talladega Night style Jack Black on top of a flaming wrecked car in his tidy whities like waving his fire suit around <laughs> in victory that he he made the show. <laughs> and, and I would would love to keep track of Jack Black's racing team. And then you have so many you have like you have the he could play shows as Tenacious D before races, you know, it would be a whole thing. But I I would absolutely love to see see him there. That's something that would get me to watch a race. There you go. Um, Keith, I really enjoyed you joining me today and giving a little bit of insight into the perspective from a NASCAR fan. Uh, For the viewers at home, if you just enjoyed Keith's personality, you can check Keith out on our other YouTube channel, Tank Media Network, Mm -hmm. Uh, as well as Keith, you have a streaming channel, correct? I do, yeah. I have a, a burgeoning Twitch channel called Tank Media Games. It's all tank branded. We can explain that to you on the other channel. Uh, but yeah, I've got a that seems to be doing stuff. So I like playing video games and making people laugh. So that's what we do over there. So there you go. If you enjoy Keith and you enjoy video games, you might like his channel. If not, you might hate it. We'll find you out. might. You might hate it. Just don't try to get it taken down. Please. I've learned that whenever I interview people that I know, there's it's a lot friendlier because I would never say that to someone else and be like, yeah. "Hey, like, go check out like so and so's channel. It might suck because I'd be yeah. afraid that they would hurt me." Right. Or you, the worst fear is that you're right because if they try to get if they get angry about it, there's something there. 
Oh, I would. If, or, or, or like if they just quit. Like I'd feel so bad if someone announced their retirement and they're like, well, I was on Brandon's podcast the other day. I'd be like, no, no, get, yeah. keep doing what you're doing. I'm sure a race fan told me I would hang it up. So I guess I'm hanging it up. Yeah. I feel like well, I, didn't, I didn't mean to hurt you like that. I know. I know you didn't. All right, Keith. Well, uh, thanks for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you. Bye-bye.